you will get an entry in the Guinness Book of Records. You have to pay about five grand for that. No, I probably won't bother them. No. Are you sure no one else has done it? Because, well, they can't have, because you're the first truck on the uh, on the market, aren't you? First, first electric truck to circumnavigate the M25. Yep. Well, I won't be needing that. When my mother-in-law comes to visit, I get anxious, very anxious. But that's nothing compared with the stress levels I'm about to encounter. Because I'm going to attempt to drive this electric Renault DZE 16-tonner around the M25 on a single charge. Now, in theory, it's doable. After all, the M25 is 117 miles, and this has a range of about 125 miles. But throw some Friday congestion into the equation and some rain, as it is forecast, and this is going to be touch and go. I'm just glad I brought these stress relieving fidgets with me and an adult colouring in book. That should really help. So, in the passenger seat, I've got Mike Stringer, he's the product manager at Renault Trucks. Mike, you're fairly confident we're going to do it today or not? Absolutely, I'm confident we're doing today, but uh, if we look outside, it's a pleasant day, there's no rain, it's not dark, so uh, we're not consuming additional energy in the cab. Uh, but the M25 is a bit of an unknown. It is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm if, we, if we hit traffic, things uh, are... I'm confident if we keep moving, we'll be fine. Uh, obviously, yeah, traffic flow can make quite a difference. But uh, you'll still be here in a few hours and, and we'll be back then. the tech spec on this one, what, what, what is it exactly? So this vehicle, D16ZE, uh, battery wise we are for 66 kilo hours, so 265 kilo hour. Okay. Uh, driving through uh, a single electric motor into a two speed gearbox. Uh, and as you'll appreciate, two speed gear, gearbox R&D on the dash, it tells you what's going on but actually it's as, it's as smooth as silk. Uh, and what you'll probably find is that it engages first to uh, maximise on the torque to pull away, uh, but once it's once it's selected top, it really hangs into top, and it really probably only drops back into first as we're stationary to pull away again. Yeah. Okay. So, have you got any tips on how to get the maximum range out of this? What, what should I be doing and not doing for that matter? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I see uh, maximising uh, efficient energy usage when driving is not dissimilar to maximizing your uh, energy use when you're driving a diesel vehicle. Okay. Anticipation, yeah. Uh, in the diesel you would classically be using your engine braking wherever possible. Well obviously it's a similar control in here, has a similar effect on you slowing down, but we're using that as regenerative braking. Yeah, and it's got so five stages, doesn't it? It's got five stages, so even if in the off stage, or in the minimal stage I should say, uh, you will find a gentle amount of regenerative, but you can feed it in and you can feed it out. So therefore it's adaptable for whatever your payload might be or whatever your braking requirements are. Yeah. And you'll get used to it and it's it's quite quick. You'll feel that you feel it in to get the braking and then you feed it out as you want it to work again. So this is the uh, the climb um, up to junction 10 and uh, it's quite a steep one. Um, it should be taking its toll, shouldn't it? Well, in fact it is, I can see it's just dropped from 95 to 93% already. Still confident? Yes, yes. And you should also see your, um, your, your, your range adjusting uh, very much like the, any vehicle as you as you get more miles, your range gets more accurate. Yeah, it's got, it's got so it's that, more at, data behind it. At the moment, it's saying the range is 155 miles, which, yeah, yeah piece of piss. We've got about 110 to go. Now, it's starting to rain. Um, if I put the wipers on, does that actually, uh, well, I assume it, it drains the battery more? It will, it will, uh, it will to usage. Yeah, all the 24 volt systems, rather than fed via an alternator, are fed via the 600 volt. But actually, when we calculate it through as to kilowatt hours to use a, a set of wipers, it's fairly, fairly minimal. Yeah. My personal interpretation is actually fuel efficient driving or energy efficient driving in a ZE is not dissimilar to fuel efficient driving in a diesel. It's all about anticipation, ahead, managing yeah. your braking. In this case, using your regenerative braking whenever possible, rather than foundation brakes. Okay. Don't waste your heat to energy, or waste your energy to heat. Put it back into the batteries. To be honest, it's a nicer environment to be in. Yeah, it is. It's very relaxing. If I wasn't looking at that um, gauge all the time, it'd be uh, even more relaxing. Down to 90% now. So we're dropping down Rygate Hill now. Um, we're on adaptive cruise, and the regen braking uh, has kicked in. We're well into the blue now, and uh, we're charging the battery. 
which is great news. Okay, so we're just about to go through the Dartford Tunnel. Um, there's uh, no exemptions for electric vehicles. We start to pay our three quid like any other two axle truck. But of course, if we were to head into London, then um, there are savings to be made on the LEZ. But that's about the only savings you can get at the moment. Isn't that, isn't that right, Mike? I mean, what would you like to see happen? What incentives would you like to see the government introduce to to encourage the widespread adoption of electric trucks? Well, of course, the adoption on, on cars has worked really well because of the uh, vehicle taxation. But actually, vehicle taxation on a commercial vehicle is no different, whether it's an uh, alternative electric drivetrain or diesel. And of course, yes, we have the uh, we have grants, uh, but from a manufacturer's perspective, those grants currently are, are very difficult to uh, to manage and very difficult to uh, qualify for. Hopefully, uh, as things progress, it will become a lot simpler. But at the minute, it's uh, yes, it's a torturous route to get the grants, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I won't be needing that. Not only was that stress-free, but dare I say, it was actually quite relaxing. It's so quiet and nice to drive. Well, as you can probably guess, we did it, and we did it in style. It's still got 39% battery life left, which is quite incredible for three and a half hours of driving. So this begs the question, if we're able to do an entire lap of the M25 on one charge, how many trucks operating within the M25 that return to base every night could run on battery power. But it's not as simple as that. There's a price hurdle to overcome. This truck has an eye-watering price tag. It's something like six times dearer than an equivalent diesel truck. And whilst we all have an obligation to save the planet, it's not many operators who can afford to. So what's the answer? Well, we need government intervention. We need clarity and we need incentives and we need them now.